the Lord, everyone. There are so many evil and wicked things happening in the world right now. We just can't keep up. I mean, we hear tragedy after tragedy, and it makes us yearn for justice. And I don't know about you, but you know, I just want to be able to go to the store and know that, you know, I will get home safely. I want to know that you will get home safely. I want to know that, you know, we can see the children go to school in the morning and come home safely. We want a place where you can um, have dreams and goals and a future. We want justice that brings peace and safety to law-abiding citizens. And, you know, that's exactly what the Lord wants. He is a loving God of justice and mercy. The question is, which one do we deserve? Now, this is a really simple but powerful message from the Lord. And I believe it's going to clear up confusion and draw us all closer to the Lord. But before we get into the word, let's pray. Father, I just come to you right now in the name of Jesus, thanking you, Lord, for being such a good and loving God, for being so kind and so compassionate towards us, so long-suffering towards us. Lord, right now we ask that you just remove anything from the atmosphere that would come against your word. Lord, open our ears that we could hear what you have to say for us. Open our eyes that we could see, Lord, Make our hearts tender that we will be receptive to your word. And Lord, that you would just strengthen our hearts, Lord. I pray that you strengthen every heart listening, Lord. That you bring peace and comfort to those who are mourning. That you bring strength to the weary. Lord, that you bring peace to those that are confused and upset and in turmoil. And Lord, right now, we just thank you, Lord, for being our God and having a good plan for us. So right now, I ask that you take over this message Holy Spirit, take over, Lord Jesus, none of me, all of you, and let everything that is said be said to the glory of God the Father. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so let's imagine we're all in the courtroom and we're waiting to be called forward. And and we hear people around us who've also been waiting, you know, they're starting to talk because it's been a while and everybody's got all these stories about how tough the judge is. They say he goes strictly by the books, no exceptions. So I don't know about you. I mean, what are you in for? Um, some people might be in for, you know, maybe a few parking tickets or, you know, uh, maybe they ran a red light. We, we just don't know um, what everybody is in for. But with all this talk about how tough the judge is, I'm starting to get nervous. So Someone just went up and they only had a few unpaid traffic tickets and we just found out they got life in prison with no parole and we didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> I say, wait a minute, isn't this just like a, the petty court, the petty court, you know, just minor infractions. And so um, I don't know what you're here for, but we are all in court today. And I know I've certainly done a lot worse than that. I don't know about you. And so um, I think we're going to need some help. And so then I see an attorney come in the room and he is there to re represent those who can't afford a lawyer. And I think that would be me and you. And um, he's telling us that the judge has video footage. He's got audio. He's got eyewitnesses. He's got DNA proof. He's got all the evidence he needs to accurately judge our case. So, um, uh oh, I think, you know, we're we might be in some trouble here. So what are we going to do? The court is in session and the charge is from Romans 3:23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So how do you plea? And I'm thinking at this point that telling the judge he isn't real and all this stuff isn't true is not going to be a good idea. So today, you and I need to get a strategy together because this is real. God is real. We have courts here on earth and even that concept comes from the Lord. There is a high heavenly court that presides over all creation and God is the judge and he rules from his throne in heaven. And I'm just not making this up. This is not just a cute little picture from someone's imagination. This image you see before you it is based on the word of God so let's take a look at um, Revelation 4 um, verses 2 through 5 and I want to remind you that a link 
to the video notes will be in the description box so please click on that link download the notes so you can follow along with all the scriptures because there's not room to put all of it on the screen so please do go to the description box and download the video notes and again we're coming from Revelation 4 verses 2 through 5 and it says immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance and there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald around the throne were 24 thrones and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes and they had crowns of gold on their heads and from the throne proceeded lightnings thunderings and voices seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God wow okay so that the person the artist who designed this picture they basically went from the book of Revelation and they just did a representation of what is described there and we know that the Bible is the Word of God okay and it tells us about God and so we know here that God is real and not only is God real Revelation 4 verse 11 says he's worthy to be praised it reads this way this is what they're saying in heaven you are worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created and so we need to take this seriously remember we said this is real and we can't tell the judge you know we well, are not real and this stuff is not true yes it is real <laughs> okay we don't need to be in denial you know the last place you want to be in denial is when you're in court you know you, we need to kind of have a clue what's going on before we get there so um let's take a, a little bit closer look at this representation of the throne room now notice in the back here the rainbow and we just read about it in Revelation well, let's um, get a little backstory about the rainbow. The rainbow is a sign of a covenant God made with every living creature on earth. And we can find details about that in Genesis chapter 9. Okay, so let's just read a small portion of that. In Genesis 9, tw verses 12 through 17, that's what we're going to read. And it is... Um, it was spoken by the Lord right after the flood okay remember in the Bible there was a flood that destroyed everything on earth and, and it happened because the people were so wicked okay so that you know ruling came from from the throne room and it says these people are too wicked um, I think it's in Genesis chapter 6 it says he was grieved with the creation everybody was so wicked and, and man's heart was just evil continually it was just evil continually so God destroyed the earth with the flood and um um, only Noah and and eight people on that ark were saved so some people think oh that's just a story it's not true but it really happened and you know there's evidence around the world um, that it is true so let's just take God at his word okay let's read Genesis 9 12 through 17 and God said this is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations I set my rainbow in the cloud and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth it shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh the rainbow shall be in the cloud and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth and God said to Noah this is the sign of the covenant which I established I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth well that's good news and you know it seems like God meant business right he, he meant it so much where you know that that judgment came and only eight made it through the judgment Wow and then he, he promised him listen it won't happen that way again he said if I have a reminder in heaven look at the reminder the rainbow is there around the cloud he has a reminder in heaven and we have a reminder that appears here on earth when it rains we see the rainbow in the cloud so that is the backstory of the rainbow and remember it represents a covenant the Lord made with the earth not to destroy it again because of wickedness okay so the Lord is being merciful and that rainbow is a sign of that covenant so we need to be real careful about how we treat the symbols of God's covenant because in 2nd Peter 2 verses 3 through 9 we are warned and it says it reads this way 
first, I want to remind you that in the last days, there will come scoffers who will do every wrong they can think of and laugh at the truth. This will be their line of argument. So Jesus promised to come back, did he? Then where is he? He'll never come. Why, as far back as anyone can remember, everything that has remained, everything has remained exactly as it was since the first day of creation. They deliberately forget this fact, that God did destroy the world with a mighty flood long after he had made the heavens by the word of his command and had used the waters to form the earth and surround it. And God has commanded that the earth and the heavens be stored away for a great bonfire at the judgment day when all ungodly men will perish. But don't forget this, dear friends, that a day or a thousand years from now is like tomorrow to the Lord. He isn't really being slow about his promised return, even though it sometimes seems that way. But he is waiting for the good reason that he is not willing that any should perish and he is giving more time for sinners to repent. Okay, wow, well, that's that's good. That sounds like a merciful God to me. That sounds very merciful to me. So we need to remember that God is good. He is merciful. And if you, you're not sure about God, you know, ele- Hebrews 11.6 reads this way. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So I want to encourage you, you know, before we go to court, because we all have a court date, we all have one, that you seek the Lord and you get that confirmation that assurance in your heart that he is real because that scripture just told us. If you diligently seek him, you will find him. So you can on your own, you can just pray and say, Lord, um, give me a, get, you know, let me know that you are real, Lord. Direct me to um, more knowledge of you. And you can find out more about God by reading the Bible. But really, you can just pray to the Lord sincerely in your own words and say, Lord, please help me to know you. Um, you know, even the Lord will give you a sign and a confirmation. Oftentimes, if you just want proof, personal proof to know that he is real. He is so kind and loving. He often does that for people. So remember, God is real. The Bible is true. And we see like this cute little illustration here. Um, A person just poured over a book, just diligently reading the word. The word of God tells us the will of God and his rules or his laws for his creation. And law is not a bad word, okay? You know, God's law is good. It is not designed to bring pain and misery. Quite the opposite. When we follow God's law, it leads to abundant life and peace. Jesus said, I come that you may have um, life and have it more abundantly. He says, the enemy, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come to, that you may have life and life more abundantly. So when we follow God, we will never be disappointed. It will never lead us to... Um, to pain. Now it might be uncomfortable for a while. It might bring a little discomfort and pain to the flesh. You know, to, if, if you want to do wrong, it'll bring pain to that part that wants to do wrong. But when we follow God's way, it will bring peace and joy and fulfillment. Okay. So Matthew 5, 18 says, for assuredly, I say to you till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. And that word jot or tittle, that just means like a stroke of a letter or like how you dot an I or cross a T. That's what that means. It's basically me. Not one even little stroke will pass away until all is fulfilled. So God um, wrote the law. He wrote the Bible. He's, he gave it to us. It's, it was inspired by the Holy Spirit and written by men, but it was inspired by God. So it is the word of God. And the prophecies in the Bible that predict the future, you know, um, way before it happens is the confirmation that this is not something that man could come up with because the Bible was written over um, hundreds of years by different people who didn't know each other, who didn't even live at the same time. But yet it's all um synced up together um not there's not a conflict is one cohesive document which just lets you know that there's a supernatural hand that is outside of time governing those words and who um dictated those words to men so the word of god is the will of god and it tells us 
his expectations, okay? Because it's his creation and he has the right to govern his own creation. Um, John 1, 1 through 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. And that scripture right there is actually referring to Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. God is so good. He didn't just write the Word in a book. He said, you know what? Since they can't see me, I'm going to come down myself manifest myself in the flesh so that they can see me live the word, live a life the way it's supposed to be lived. And they'll have a physical example of how to follow me. And the word of God is Jesus Christ. He is the word of God made flesh. You can read all about that in the gospel. Start with the book of John um, or you, that talks um, a lot about how um, Jesus was the son of God and the son of man. It, it goes more to his divine nature. All right, so Jesus is the word of God made flesh. And remember, the Bible is true. Okay, and then Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, and the light. No man comes to the Father except by me. So God's word is very important. So now let's read what God's word says in Romans 1, verses 18 through 22. And it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Well, that's a strong statement, but you know, how would you feel if you created something and it just totally mocked you and disobeyed you and it treated you as if you were nothing when you were actually the one who gave you know, that creation life. And so that's what God has done for us. He has given us life. Um, and not only that, he, he actually loves us so much. And we're going to get into that next. He actually loves us. Okay. We're not just his creation, just something, just a little play thing. No, we're very important to God. And so he did something very, very important. And I want you to hang around to the end because you know, this is, seems like, you know, really serious and a hard word, and it is, but it's also a good word because we serve a good God who is real, and he gave us the Bible, which is true, and he loves us. God loves you. Jesus loves you. And remember, we learned Jesus is the Son of God. He's also the Word of God, and he is God in the flesh. John 1 14 says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. And we're going to read another passage from the book of John. It's in John three verses 16. And we're going to read 17. Most of the time we stop at 16. That's a very popular verse, but we're going to read down through 17 as well. And it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then 317 reads, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And look at all of these beautiful people represented in this image, people from all backgrounds, all parts of the world, all nationalities. God sent his son to die for everyone. So we all have an equal opportunity to come to God for salvation, okay? Because it says, whosoever believes in him might be saved, okay? And then now let's read a little bit further down in John chapter 3. We're going to go down to verse 18 and read through 20. Because most people... Uh, Oftentimes they skip this part, just read the John 3, 16 part, but don't get down to the rest of it. So let's read John 3, 18 through 20. And it reads, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. And this is the condemnation 
that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil, practicing evil, hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. So let's break that down a little bit. Um, God loves us and he gave his son to die for our sins. And it's for everyone. And, you know, in the Bible, that word believe in um, the original language that word believe just doesn't mean something you mentally do. It means something mental that you believe. So you, through your action, you confirm that belief. Okay. So we know that faith without works is dead. So when, every time in the Bible, you see that word believe automatically just associate with believe is believe and obey or believe and act. Your, your actions will line up with your belief, right? So again, Jesus loves you and God gave Jesus to us as a gift to die for our sins. No one needs to perish. So listen, you don't have to be afraid to go to court when you're in Jesus. You don't have to be afraid to go to court if you're willing to, you know, confess and admit your sins. You don't have to be afraid to go before the throne of God. If you're willing to confess, admit your sins and ask the Lord to save you, you do not have to be afraid. It's only if you refuse to acknowledge the wrong that you've done and you refuse to change. That's when you need to be afraid. Because again, you know, um, God is not mocked. It's a real, he's a real God. He's um, really has a heaven. He really is sitting on the throne. He really will judge everyone. And so let's learn a little bit more about that. Okay, so let's recap. Remember, God is real. The Bible is true. Jesus loves you. And here's the last point. God is higher than you. He's higher than me. God is higher than all of us. He is our creator. Even the most powerful, influential person in the world is like a speck of dust compared to the Lord. And so now I have some good news and some bad news. Um, here we are in the courtroom and it's our turn. And, you know, remember that really tough judge we were waiting to see? Jesus is the judge. It's like, what? Yes, Jesus is the judge. You know, we've known him as, you know, the Lamb of God, sweet Jesus. He's a miracle worker. He's the healer. He died on the cross and he is all of those things. But he is also the judge. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Whoa, okay, so that's something to think about. Everything, we all have to appear and we have to answer for everything we've done. That's what the word of God says. Remember, the word is true. Hebrews 9, 27 through 28 says, and as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly wait for him. He will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Okay. So that's a little bit better. You know, we, there's some people that are eagerly waiting to see the judge. Now, remember this, when you go into a courtroom, and you're going before the judge, there's the guilty party, and then there's the injured party, right? And so for the injured party, the one who's waiting for justice and um, restitution and for things to be made right, that person is going to be rewarded. But then all the guilty parties will be punished. And so, um, you know, that's good news and bad news, but listen to this news. This is very important news. Jesus is also our attorney. He is busy, isn't he? So he's God. He's the judge. He's the attorney. Um, listen to what it says in 1 John 2, 1 through 2. It says, my little children, I am telling you this so that you will stay away from sin. But if you sin, there is someone to plead for you before the father. His name is Jesus Christ, the one who is all that is good and who pleases God completely. He is the one who who took God's wrath against our sins upon himself and brought us into fellowship with God. And he is the forgiveness for our sins, but not only ours, but all the world's. Remember all those beautiful people from the last slide? They were from every walk and background. God took away the whole sins of the world. But 
we still have something we have to do that that's available to us okay so the lord um wants us to have a good answer for this question are you ready to see the judge so think about that carefully remember god has all the evidence regarding our case he has um the video the audio he's got eyewitnesses even our own guilty conscience testifies against us so we are all guilty no doubt about it remember all those beautiful people in the world from every walk and background everybody's guilty for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god but this is the good news jesus christ our attorney has worked out a deal on our behalf with the judge and remember he's the judge so he knows the judge he is the judge right and you know how your attorney is the one who prepares you to see the judge he he um gets your case together and he tells you how to act and what to dress like and everything you need to do before you go in court all right so listen to this we have no excuse right jesus is our attorney he knows the judge because he is the judge so he's telling us exactly what we need to do when we get to this courtroom so remember that question um are you ready to see the judge he's gonna get us ready just keep listening okay just keep listening we're almost there um if we plead guilty as charged and agree to enter the attorney's redemption program i mean the attorney has worked out a a, a process for us where we can we can get out of this thing now he's he's made a way if we plead guilty as charged and agree to in, enter into the attorney's care we can walk away a free man or a free woman today that is good news because remember they got all the evidence there's no doubt about it you you know we really don't have another way out but jesus right so watch this jesus paid for our release so the judge did not excuse our behavior instead our behavior was paid for by jesus's sacrifice on the christ so look Jesus is the judge, he's the attorney, he's God, and he's our sacrifice, and he's our righteousness, and he's our forgiveness. So that's why Jesus is so important. That's why there's no other way to get into heaven except through Jesus Christ. Okay, so Jesus um, didn't do all that just to excuse our behavior. No, he did it. He paid for our behavior, and now he wants us to be transformed, to be renewed into a law-abiding citizen okay and if you're ready to do the, are you ready to take this really good deal this morning because i know i am and and now although i've already been in this process for quite a while i've been under the redemption program for a while now i've been been in the salvation plan for quite a while now but when even when we are already saved daily we need to stay under the lord's care you know think about it this way He's also like the the um, probation officer, right? You know how people, they're out of jail, but they're on probation, right? Because they're being reworked into society. They're on probation. You have to go see that probation officer. You have to report in. And, you know, he, he's making sure that you're on track. So that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. He makes sure we're on track. So um, we need to receive this offer from Jesus. And if you're ready, we're going to pray but before we pray we're going to read one more scripture just to bring it home colossians 2 13 through 15 says you were dead in sins and your sinful desires were not yet cut away then he gave you a share in the very life of christ for he forgave all your sins and blotted out the charges proved against you the list of his commandments which you had not obeyed he took this list of sins and destroyed it by nailing it to Christ's cross. In this way, God took away Satan's power to accuse you of sin and God openly displayed to the whole world Christ's triumph at the cross where your sins were all taken away. Okay, so that's good news. And if you want that scripture to apply for you, to apply to you, and you want um, to be under the Lord's care, pray with me right now. We are praying salvation. Okay, you ready? Dear Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord. We confess that we have sinned and fallen short, Lord, of your glory. Please forgive us of all of our sins, Lord. We believe Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose again. And now, Lord, we ask, Lord Jesus, please come into our heart, come into our life, and please fill us with your Holy Spirit. We want you to be the Lord of our lives. Help us to forgive and love others the way you do. And help us, Lord, to love you more each day and obey you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so if you were in agreement with that prayer and you prayed something similar to that or 
or just whatever your own sincere words were, but you want the Lord to save you. You want to be under his care. You want him to take away the charges that are against you and you're accepting his offer of salvation. You're accepting the plea bargain. If you did that, you are saved today. You can go free. And the Bible says who the son sets free is free indeed. And now the Lord wants us to walk in the new life Jesus died for us to have. So we don't want to go back to our old ways. We want to learn the new way of living, God's way of um, having us to do things, right? We don't want to go back to our old sins. We want to walk in the newness of life. So stay in Jesus' salvation plan. Get with your probation officer. Get with the Holy Spirit who makes sure you're staying on track, okay? And I love you. I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. And remember, I want to leave you with this. There are rewards for those who stay in Jesus' redemption program. John 14, 1 through 3 says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Guess what? Not only is God the creator, he's the judge, he's the word of God. He is the forgiveness of our sins. He is our attorney. He is the probation officer. And if you ask him into your life, he is your father. He is your daddy. And he is going to prepare a place for you. And you're going to be with him forever in the very real place, heaven. So I love you. Have a blessed week and um, stay strong in the Lord.